I'll start with a, a quick introduction of my very, very good friend, Phil. So thank you uh, for joining the Deal Final Corner this uh, Tuesday, uh, on this beautiful Tuesday. And I'm joined here by my very good friend, uh, Phil. Uh, Phil, who runs together with team uh, property, property portfolio building. And it's a good friend of mine. We've been involved in a few things. Run, uh, we've raised some money for charity for a while. Um, I've still got nightmares about that. I know. <laughs> it was the hardest thing I ever did. But that, we, literally the hardest thing I've ever done. We we did it, yeah. didn't we? So and uh, yeah. yeah, Phil Phil is an absolute gent based in North Manchester. He's got a, a ton of experience in in sales, in property. In a, I think you've got a recruitment background and uh, got into property a few years ago. And now you uh, you run a property portfolio building, which is a service that helps uh, build portfolio for people like a turnkey kind of solution, and mainly doing commercial to resi and HMO conversions, so giving opportunities to people to find high cash flow opportunities. And um, you've been you were you and team were uh, some of the early adopters of of property filter, and am I right saying that since the beginning of this year, so we are. Eight months through the year, oh. we've you found November, November November twenty two. Yeah, that's right. We were one of the we were one of your first that's hundred right, yeah. or something, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So in less than a year, and I think since the beginning of the year, you went out and find seven deals directly from Property Filter, but also you used the the sourcing pipeline, so the the thing yeah. backing up Property Filter to convert the Property Filter leads into deals to to yeah. manage uh, to manage your all your off-market, you know, opportunities and other channels all into one place. So yeah, I think it's we, eight deals now. I think we've just closed another one. We closed another one a couple of weeks ago, but eight deals via property filter. And yeah, we use property filter for all our sourcing aspects now. So even if we find one on a like a commercial site or we find one at auction that we're interested in, we upload it to property filter. So all our deal pipeline is in one place. Um, it's just better for us to do that because obviously your deal flow, it's just all we wanted was a simple deal flow. And some of the systems out there are so complex and it's literally like, I found a deal. They've said, no, I want to ring them back in a few weeks. Where do I save mm -hmm. it? You know, I used to have like little colored folders and sticky labels and all that kind of stuff, but I just like simple things. I'm a simple creature. Um, so if it's easy, it's for me. And this was really easy. So yeah, it was really, you know, really, has been a real, it's been really good for others. How many deals in total? Is that 11 or 12 now? Uh, 13. I think we've done 13, 13. deals in total. Um, um eight, eight, and I think eleven of the, uh, yeah, I think eleven of them, eight of them, eight of them are on property filter by a property filter. I think eleven of them are they in the deal thing on property filter. And there's a couple that are still in follow up, which are about to, which we've done the deal, just not moved it across or whatever. So yeah, awesome. Okay, cool. So I'm really looking forward. So you've got a bit of a presentation. So over to you, Phil. I'll make you co-host. I think that's the that's a good thing to do, um, and uh, I'll help you. Uh, share with our guests. <clears throat> okay. Share a, bit, a little bit more about what you do, or you do it with Property Filter. And then if we, and then if you've got some time, if you can leave some time for the Q&A, that'd be great as well. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. So I'll start my presentation. And then what we'll do is we'll just do a quick sense check to make sure you can see it. You can yeah. see my screen. I'm going to talk over the top of this for a couple of minutes just to introduce myself. And then we'll dive into the today's today's topics. Um, so, uh, my colleague, Tim is also online. So if you have questions as we go, my, my co-director, Tim, who's did, did the podcast with you, as you mentioned, he's online. So if you put check questions into the chat box, if he can, uh, he'll, he'll answer, he'll answer your questions as we go, or like we said, a Q and A at the end. So, um, uh, so by way of introduction, so Phil Bygrave, as Tim mentioned, um, I know him from the property circuit. We met on property entrepreneur, which is, a um, um, uh, training and coaching program. Uh, we were one of uh, Property Filters early adopters. Uh, my background is I was corporate. Um, so I started as a junior salesperson in 2002 in the recruitment space. I uh, did 18 years, uh, build my way up to C-suite and uh, running running these kind, of, these kind of businesses, always high growth, aggressive sales businesses. Um, I didn't really have, you know, construction skills as it, as it, as it was. So my, my introduction into uh, property was through the uh, Simon Zich program, the, ma the mastermind program or that, uh, where I met my business partner, Tim, Tim's background is a uh, 15 years, a bit younger than me, 15 years as a project development manager. Um, so together we built a system, which is fully turnkey, um, which is property portfolio building, 
And then we've got Invest Multilet Property Manager. So we find, we source, build, and manage multi-income properties in and Greater Manchester for clients is, a, is, a, is, a, is an explanation briefly what we do. Um, and I'll go through that in a little bit more detail later um, um, as, we, as, as, as we move forward. So what I wanted to do is add a bit of value today. I didn't want to like just say, look, come away with those, that'd be great. And I noticed actually one or two of our clients are on the call as well. So hello to you. Um, so I wanted to add a bit of value. So what I've done is I've put together a presentation, which I hope is going to talk a little bit more holistically first. We're going to talk about strategy uh, and then we're going to do the application of strategy because that was the thing that I was always concerned about was what is my strategy and then how do I apply that? And this is pre-property filter. So now I've got property filter, it really saves my time because I can just apply strategies. And our strategies are mixed. So we have HMOs, we have blocks of flats, we have some which are SA, we're going to we do some flips, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, but each of these strategies is very, very precise. So I'm going to demonstrate one today, which is our most common strategy. Uh, and then you can hopefully take some value from that. And then, you know, if at the end with the Q&A, we'll do a dive in. And if anybody wants to nominate a location, please don't choose Manchester or London because that's boring. I do Manchester all day in London. I just don't touch because I get a nosebleed. It makes my head it makes my head want to explode. Um, I don't understand it. I don't know why anyone lives there. It's too many people. Uh, let's not talk about London. So if anything... Any other locations anybody wants to have a look at, if you do uh, some of this, the HMO strategy, please stick it in the chat box and we'll choose one as we move along. And we'll see if we can do a live strategy Q&A uh, at the end. So, right. So first and foremost, um, Property Filter is the tool that you're using previewing, right? So before I go to view something, I kind of want to know why am I on Property Filter? Why am I even here? Why have I bought this program? Why, have I, why am I spending... I don't know how much it is a month now, game, so I won't embarrass you by saying the first hundred price. So uh, why why am I spending whatever it is per calendar month on this system? You know, why am I actually here? And the first question, so I've just done a bunch of questions there. Feel free, if you want to take photos or any of these screens, you're more than welcome. Answer these questions. And if you can't answer these questions, then, you know, you're going to be in a bit of a bit of difficulty. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk about these questions as we move through uh, property fields. And you can apply this to any strategy. And we will talk about how to choose your strategy as well, which is um, something I didn't know for my first two years of property. And then I'm just going to give it you in a nutshell. So so what is my strategy? What is my location? What is my brand standard, which is really important because that comes down to how much I'm going to spend. How am I going to fund it? How am I going to exit? How much is my stuff going to cost? And what, what do I have to spend? You know, it seems simple, right? They're really challenging questions. And I'll give you, I, I'll tell you now, I'm in several property networks. I'm also the uh, uh, Manchester North PIN um host so I, I host manchester north pin I, I can tell you now virtually nobody can answer all of these questions in the first couple of years of their property life cycle so if you can already answer these questions congratulations you're already much more advanced than the average uh, property investor who's just bought their first buy to let which is normally a two up two down or something like that right so uh and if you can't answer those questions then it's you have to answer the question that i asked two years into my property journey which was uh, what the uh, what the f am I doing here? What am I actually doing? Why am I doing this? Because I can't answer these questions. So I was jumping the gun. So I was moving forwards with things. I didn't know the answers to my questions. So I was looking at right move at the time, going right move blind and Zoopla blind, looking at the same property on right move that's on Zoopla, and then looking at the same. I'd, I'd go into the same pictures, and like I'd look at one site and then another site, and I'd be on the same pictures going. What am I doing with myself? Like, why am I looking? I've just looked at this. I know it doesn't work. Why am I doing it? So answer those questions. And then otherwise, you're going to be in the space that I was two years into my journey. So how do I assess where I'm up to in my strategy? So does anybody recognize this? Wealth pyramid. Guillaume's going to recognize this. Does anybody understand what these things are? Cash flow, profit, and assets. So everybody in property is on one of these levels, whether they know they're on their level on that level or not. So ultimately, you're joining into the property space for one of these reasons. You're either looking to make cash flow, and if that's the case, then you might be like I was, which is I've done 18 years in heavy sales, 10-hour days, and some Saturdays. I'm tired, and I look way older than I am. So um, I'm looking to replace my income, and I want to be able to do that through property, in which case my first stage was, was cash flow. Um, however... What people tend to do is they get stuck on cash flow and then going after cash flow, cash flow, cash flow, cash flow. But if you're already paying for yourself through property or through some other some other things, it could be a cash flow business, could be a little maintenance business property. We do lettings. That's one of our cash flow strategies. 
Um, so it doesn't necessarily have to be pro- just just property. It could be you know dividend paying stocks and shares. Could be any reason to to get away from the rat race. Um, but all of those things are cash flow strategies. It's not something I'm going to pass on necessarily in my will to my family. I'm not going to send them a busy cash flow strategy on a rent to rent deal or a purchase lease option in a will. I'm just not going to do that. You know, and I'm not also not going to do the actual asset owning strategies and cash flow, which is HMOs and stuff like that. I'm probably going to sell them hopefully before I die, and then I'm going to move up the chain. So once I've hit my cash flow, I'm then so if you're if you're looking at cash flow and you're doing like a training course, you're either doing Simon Zucci, Rob Moore, Samuel Leeds, any of those types of things, you you you're probably looking at cash flow strategies. The next one up from that is profit. So if you've ever done like the uh, property CEO with Richard Clapson, or he says, don't don't worry about tenants, just build property, or you do flips, or you just want to make money. You love your job. Congratulations if you do that. Um, well done you. You probably listened at school, whereas I didn't. Um, um, and therefore, or you have a business or something that's paying you, or you've got lots of incomes, and then you might be looking at profit. And the reason we look at profit is then we're going to take the profit and convert it into assets. Um, so the way we do that is you take profit, um, from all of your businesses and your savings, you put that into a property, you make money on your profit, and that is then what you invest into your asset. And the reason you do that is your asset then becomes your income and then uh, the noisy cash flow strategy at the bottom, the rent to rent purchase these options that, you know, whatever it is you do in HMO, service accommodation, are then no longer your primary concern and your your easy assets, your long yield assets, your commercial properties, your single buy to lets in popular locations, the stuff that's never going to cause you any noise. That's the stuff that I call wealth generation. Um, uh, um, and you can pass that down through trust or whatever to, to your kids and family. So is everybody with me so far? Hopefully. Okay, so that's just a really, really brief, brief. There's a whole session on this if we do strategies with us and we try and get to get to the grip. So in each of your things, it's, that's how you decide in your strategy. What am I trying to do? Am I trying to do cash flow? Am I trying to do profit? Am I trying to do assets? And then you're going to answer those questions. So I gave you an indicate. I'm going to give you an actual answers, and I'll tell you where I'm up to. So whenever I ask somebody what cash flow do you want from property, they either say 5K or 10K a month. Okay, anyone guilty of that? Nice round number, three zeros on the end. I either want 5K or 10K a month. Where does that number come from? I have no idea, right? So I have no idea where that number comes from. It's just 5K or 10K. It doesn't matter where it comes from. I just want that a month uh, because it's a nice round number and, uh, you know, I only got C in math. So um, the, uh, for me, when I actually sat back after a couple of years and looked at it, what I actually wanted was to replace all my outgoings with income from property so I didn't have to worry about them. So my specific, and I review this regularly, income from property requirement is £3,361 per calendar month. I live in the north. Sorry to anybody in the south. Appreciate I've got a mortgage as well. I know it's cheap. Okay, so, but um, that's how much it costs me to live in my four-bed detached property with my wife, who's now works for our business, and my daughter and my son, right? So, you know, it's that's how much it costs me per calendar month. And that was my first goal. So when I hit that goal... I then thought, I want to get up to the assets column. That's the ultimate goal is the assets column. Um, and to do that, all my surplus income now is going to go into my profits. So what I'm going to then try and generate is 150 grand a year, no longer looking at the monthly, now looking annually from profit, on profit. So I'm going to have a baseline, a baseline amount of money I put in there, or I'm going to work on JVs with other people who put their money in for profit. And then I'm going to, use that to generate money, which I'm then going to convert to assets. And the assets column is purely for me, either very low LTV, which is loan to value, very low LTV, 50% or less, or completely unencumbered property that is very easy to manage. You're never going to hear from the tenants. Or if you do, it's it's for a genuine reason. No one's complaining about somebody's nicked the milk from the fridge, like in the HMO or you know, your service accommodation cleaners haven't shown up or whatever. It's just not going to get that noise. Um, and I'm going to replace my re- outgoing requirement through my assets, at which point I'll have double that income. So I'll have 3361 coming from my noisy and my assets, and I'll start to sell off my noisy properties because I no longer need them. Okay, so I'm going through this wealth pyramid to generate profit, and they will generate more profit, which I'll convert to more assets, and I'll get to four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, okay, and then continue to build that way. Okay, and the reason I do that is... You can do a lot with 50K a year, right? You can do a lot with 50K a year income and 1 million in equity in assets at 8% yield, which is a low to medium yield, is 50K per annum. 
So my immediate target is that. And that's how I, that's where I am. So I'm now at the profit into asset stage. We've already achieved level one. We're at profit into asset stage, which is why the development business is there as well. So we do this for other people that generates profit. It's a profit play for us. And then we're going to put that into assets, 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 and generate that money. Okay. So hopefully that helps you a little bit of strategy. If you haven't really given the strategy any, any thought. Um, so moving on back to the questions. So now I know my strategy. So I'm on cash flow. When I was on cash flow, what is my strategy? My st cash flow strategy is HMOs. Uh, that's what I do. That's what I decided to do. And that's where we're going to talk about today. Um, just to give you a bit of an example on one of the strategies. Uh, what is my gold mine location? Mine was Greater Manchester because that's where I live. Uh, so I needed to understand and learn where the uh, locations of Greater Manchester were, what, you know, central belt, outside of central belt, how much things cost, et cetera. What is my brand standard? This really, really matters because if you're doing social housing, it's going to be very different if you're doing professional co-living HMOs. Um, so we do professional co-living HMOs. Uh, and it's the same if you go for service accommodation. If you're doing for contractors in town centers, that might be very different to going for holiday-based locations. So you need to understand what your brand standard is and your brand message and what, that, what that's going to be because that's going to affect your overall cost. Um, so as an example, our HMO, room, HMO rooms for sort of socials, it's about 15K room renovation for a, for a, like a four-bed to a five-bed property or something like that. For our, for our top-end standard, we've been up to 23K per room for a, for a, for a HMO conversion. So it's a, it's a big number difference. Um, what funding will I use? Am I bridging? Am I part bridging? Am I all cash? Whatever. So what I say to people is, you know, you need a hundred grand to do a five bed co-living HMO in Greater Manchester, roughly. Um, if you want to do more than that, every bed add 15 grand, just as a, as a, as an example. Um, you get to about 150 and obviously then you can be a bit more flexible on, you know, what you could do later, but between five and sort of like eight, eight, eight beds, you're just adding 10 to 15 K each time. Um, and, uh, if you're using bridging and then if you're doing all cash, most of our developments are about 300 grand for a five bed, 320 for a six. This gives you like a rough example of total spend on that. So, uh, what is my exit? Are you keeping it? Are you selling it? What are you doing? Why are you doing it? So if you're on cash flow, you're keeping it. So what is, you have to work out at the end? You know, what is, what is my actual exit? Do I know my yields for the area? Am I going to go for commercial valuation? Can I get them at four beds? Can I get them at five beds? Does it have to be a six bed? What can I do in my area? Um, is there a difference between article four, non-article four? We'll talk about that in a little while. Um, what does stuff cost? If you're going to, so if you do, even if you're doing flips, if you're going to take advantage of permitted development, so you can, for example, if you're doing a flip and you want to do a three meter extension at the back under permitted development, you can do that. It's up to three meters. Uh, you can do that. Um, if you wanted to add internal space and internal rooms, or you want to go in the loft, you can do that, but all of those things cost money. So for example, if we wanted to add a 20 meter kitchen on the back of one of our properties, our most recent cost was 40,000 pounds to build a 20 meter kitchen at the reverse of our property, 40,000 pounds. So when I do my calculations, I need to be specific. Uh, if I want to go in my loft, it's now 18,000 to do a loft conversion before I add in my room costs. So if I'm doing a room cost of 18 K and I've got uh, an 18 K conversion, I'll probably take a little bit off because some of the partitioning is being done, but to be honest with you, I'm, I'm probably in around the 26, 27 grand to go into a loft. So if, if that's the thing that you're going to do, that's fine, but you need to work that in and you need the big numbers. You can be a little bit like, you need to know the really big, important stuff. Um, if you, you know, we've just recently done all our HMO conversions and our HMO conversions over the last two years have ranged between 18 and 23 K per room for co-living HMOs. Our lowest one, which is a little bit out there, is an existing HMO. All we're doing is, you know, top and tails, really. It's, it's decoration and, and adding in some en suites. Uh, and that's going to come in at around 14K per room. Because it's expensive to do, you know, fire safety, you know, win new windows, you know, that type of stuff, because we're looking for derelict properties normally. Uh, and then at the end, you need to know you're going to get the value. So you need to understand where the yield sits in your area. Um, because if you make a mistake on that, it can cost you dearly. Because if you get the wrong yield, uh, equation and obviously um, when you do a yield equation if you're doing it for commercial valuation you add up all the rents and you divide by the yield the lower the yield percentage the better but if you're way out in the sticks and you've compared to a town center or city center hmo at like eight to ten percent yield but you're way out in the sticks you're going to get 13 to 15 percent yield depending on the location in the uk it's a massive difference so as an example an 11 percent yield 
uh, on one of our properties would be 330 grand. A 12 and a half, sorry, an 11 percent yield. One of our properties would be uh, four, four, 440,000 pounds. A 12 and a half percent yield would be 330,000 pounds. So it's 110 grand difference. So you really need to like, focus on your yield percentages if you're going to go up to commercial valuations. If you're doing bricks and mortar, much easier, comparables, etc. So and then what can I spend? What money have I got? You know, being you've got to be honest with yourself. If you're not quite at that level to do a HMO or something like that, then you're going to do a flip. Maybe you do a profit tax flip first, and then you go and do a HMO. And once you then build credibility, you might then invite a partner to do your next HMO, use their money, and then you split the cash flow, whatever it is, but you're on the journey. And that's sort of a little bit about strategy. Um, so in terms of key strategies for HMOs, we've done a YouTube thing. Um, so there's five videos on there. One of them's got a bit of dodgy sound. I'm going to redo it. But if you really, really want to learn more about HMOs specifically, I don't want to go into too much detail here. I'm going to add some value, but there's a, there's a YouTube channel there. Use that QR code, take your phone, take that, take a picture of that QR code now, do it later. Um, you can go and have a look at it. There's five videos. It's about 40 to 45 minutes worth of content across five videos. And it just talks nothing but HMOs and strategy on HMOs. So feel free to do that if you're interested in doing that. Uh, I'm going to move on in about five seconds. Uh, Guillaume, can you send this out after? Oh, no. Yeah. Okay. So we can move on anyway. Um so the first thing on any strategy before you go to property filter is you need to have some fundamental understanding of what you're doing. So when I go to property filter and I'm talking my sourcing team, I now have, um, I'm thinking, you know, before I go to property filter, what is my space, light and rights? So there's a couple of, another couple of things here you might want to send out game, which is, uh, you might send out the presentation if you want, but space, light, some rights for flats, as an example, or, or, or one story dwellings or two story dwellings. It's also the same for houses. I just put flats at the top there as an example. So do you understand the planning standards for your to do use permitted development rights uh, in, in your area? Um, so if I'm a one story dwelling, single studio, 37 meters square is the minimum um, and 39 meters square is, is, is if you're going to put a bath in. That's the difference. So two meter bath between 37 and 39. Yeah. Okay. So know your space standards on that. And then if you know your space standards on that, and but you want to do HMOs, do you know your space standard on the HMOs? So uh, single room, 6.51 meters, double room, 10.22 meters. If you're doing it for kids and children's homes, there's different standards. It's, oh, it's there, 4.64. The most important thing you can learn is that's the national space standard. What's your local authority space standards? Because, for example, Blackburn Council is now Article 4. They have a 12-meter space standard, even though there's a national standard of 10.22 meters. So if you're doing a double room, you have to have 12 square meters. So they can change that in their local authority. Uh, and the second thing you need to understand is what is the communal space provision depending on what type of rooms you provide. So in, in certain locations like Oldham, for example, if we provide any single rooms, we need to provide both dining and living spaces. So you can't just provide kitchen diner. You've got to go dining and living. And it really increases the footprint. So we all of a sudden we've gone from 11.5 square meter kitchen diner to minimum of 19 and a half square meters kitchen, dining, and living, right? So, and that is the difference between those two things. And it's huge when you're looking at a footprint of a building. Um, so what do we find on property filter? What do we then find, right? So what we're looking for, so our brand standard, as we talked about earlier, is co-living. So we want all double rooms with en-suites. So all double rooms with en-suites, um, what we're going to look at is space, lights, and rights for double room with en-suites. So ours, and Guillaume's actually put, I think he might have stole this from us, but our, uh, and you, you can admit it if you want, mate, our brand standard starts for a co-living uh, HMO at five rooms for five income streams. And we want 100 square meters internally for that. And the property filter filter for HMOs is 100 meters square. And he's going to say he didn't steal it, but I'm telling you he stole it 100%. All right. Uh, and this is the kind of thing that you see. So the first thing that I find is, uh, this is one that we did on property filter, by the way. So this is what you got presented with. So I'm like, okay, so all of these nice things. The first thing I'm looking at is space. What am I looking for? I can add that up, add that up, add that up. But more importantly, at the num top there, there's a number. So if I can scroll in 50 and 50. So that is literally bang on the number that I need. So all I then need to see is right. If it's a hundred square meters, that space, I know I can get my five rooms in there, all en suite and the kitchen diner. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, then I'm looking for windows. So 
natural light is what I'm looking for. I don't want to have to put windows in because I can't necessarily do that under permitted development, depending on the area, depending on the outlook of the property. That's a whole different conversation. So what I'm looking for is existing windows and lights. Can I do this under complete permitted development? So how many windows do I need for five bed with a kitchen diner? Have a think for a second. Every space needs natural light. Six, minimum six, right? So if I don't have six windows, I'm not going to see in this property. And the good thing about this property is it's got three sides to it. So it's not detached, but it's got three sides. So if I look at the first floor, I've got one, two, three. Can you see my mouse? I don't think you can see my mouse. So I've got one on the right, on the first look, pitch on the right, one on the right, one, two at the top, one on the left, and another one on the left. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, just on the first floor. On the ground floor, obviously, it's cut off a little bit. You can just see one on the natural on the, set, on the right side. I've got one, two, three that I can see. So that's, a, you know, I can, I've got plenty of windows for light. So I've already gone space and light. The final thing is, is right. So what are my rights here? So first of all, is there a planning requirement? This was a non-Article 4 H, uh, area. So there was no, I could do this under permitted development. Uh, and then the secondary thing is, what are the license requirements? The license requirements for a five bed, all en suite, 11 and a half square meters as a kitchen. So, and I'm going for a co-living one. Uh, um, so I can do that within that footprint. So I'm going to convert that at that point. So we go in, we make the offer, we get the deal done. And before the offer, offer closes, before the sale is done, I spend a little money, I get this drawn up. So this is my architectural drawing, drawings for my architects, for as HMO specialist architect for this. Uh, and one of the things you need to consider is um, the red lines. The red lines are your fire escapes. They all need fire boarding. It's very expensive. Fire doors on all doors uh, in that corridor space. Very, very expensive to do. This is what's added a lot of cost over the last few years. Uh, but as you can see, if I scroll in again, 10.3, uh, 12.5 meters at the bottom left there, bed two. Uh, bed four was 10.22 square meters. So when my builder was in, I took him by the hand almost literally and I was explaining to him, you cannot lose any millimeters here. You've got to have that 10.2, 10.3. And then on the right there, uh, bed three is 10.11.2. So basically I've got five en suites, en suite, en suite, en suite, en suite, en suite, five en suites and a kitchen diner. And it's literally the kitchen diner is 14 square meters. So I've only got, um, and it's quite tight, those rooms to get the double standards. I've only got about two and a half meters to play with. So that's why 100 meters is our minimum. Yeah. Then finally, we turned what was a derelict building into this. So that's that 14 square meters kitchen diner. Uh, they're the ensuite uh, type uh, facilities um, that we provide. Uh, it's above standard. It's professional co-living HMO. And this is right by a hospital. Um, so it's really in a, a really, really solid location within the, within the Greater Manchester District. It's one of the royal hospitals as well. The big ones with all the wards and all that kind of stuff. So there's lots of there's a nursing college next door. You know, there's, there's a lot there's a lot of employment in that area, uh, which brings us on. So space, lights and rights. So before I even like uh, I found this on Property Builder, before I even view, I've ticked those boxes. And the second thing I can then tick is this. It's my location. So this is the this is a snip from Property Filter. Uh, so location, location, location. Second thing on the YouTube videos that we talk about. Uh, these are the non-article four boundaries within the Greater Manchester area. Uh, Games kindly now we used to have to do this manually. Games kindly uploaded Article Four zones uh, into Property Filter. I still have to check them, check every uh, them now and again because there's a couple of postcodes which are a bit borderline, but generally speaking, very good. Um, and these, so I'm looking for properties in those zones at all times for non-Article Four HMOs that I can develop. Uh, and if for flats, I'm looking for residential capital uh, capital gain. Uh, HMOs, I'm looking for commercial cash flow because I'm going to go for commercial valuations at the end. Um, this is what we do. So obviously property portfolio building is the uh, um, developer. Invest Multilet is the lettings and agent and we only do HMOs and multi-block lettings. So we're a specialist in that space. We've split these zones, this Greater Manchester zone into these zones. So, and we use this to use for our rental comparables and to explain to valuers why we've chosen that site. Um, so when it comes to the end of the project and you get your surveys done, we can say, here's all our evidence. Here's the zones that we do. Here's all our ASTs. Here's the uh, here's the comparable data from Spare Room and from Open and from Right Move. 
and this is how we're going to go go, go around our, our valuation. So we've split it into five zones within within the area, and I would say that there's at least five zones in most cities. Um, so zone one being city centre, uh, zone two being like inner city suburbs uh, or or major higher end towns. So in Manchester, there's there's a difference between the town values. So you've got a few towns which are a bit more posh, normally in the south of Manchester. And a few towns which are a bit more northern in the north of Manchester and a bit more reasonably priced, which is what where I live versus where Tim lives. Uh, he lives in the posher end of town. Um, um, and it affects you both on the yield and on the rent. And the reason you need to understand both those things is you can miss out on deals if you only have one pricing structure. So if you don't understand that your rental your, your your price yields are different in different areas of your city or, or location, you can miss out on deals. So zone one, city centre Manchester, I'm going looking for an eight to 10% yield. And I explained the difference between 11 and 12 and a half before, it's like 110 grand. Um, and the rents are higher. So what that means is the material value of property I can purchase, as long as I can do the development or it's already got a license or it's already got planning, is I can spend a bit more on those properties in the comfort that I'm going to achieve higher rents and a better yield. Whereas at zone five, which is the bottom, they're, they're starting to get a little bit punchy, starting to get a little bit lower end of the, of the professional standard market. And the yields are starting to get a bit punchier, so eleven and a half to thirteen percent. So here's one that um, uh, here's one that we did before uh, that we've just done recently. So this is a zone three non article four one that we did. Um, so apologies for the GP writing, uh, but you should be able to see it. So the white cross, I've just like blacked out the actual address. The white the white cross is where the property was. So the red uh, the red circle we see Stockport, the red line around Stockport. That's the M60 Manchester Ring Road, the motorway around Manchester. So that's one of the zones. So what we've done here is we've planned out all around that area, our competitor locations, which is zone three, as you see M24Z3 we're looking at. Beneath it, closer to Manchester, where it, which it said, where it says zone one, you've got zone one, zone two, zone three. So ours is zone three, because it's right on the commuter belt. Um, uh, it's right on the red line of the, uh, you can just see the red line to the left of the cross. Uh, and there's other zone three locations following that red line around that I'm going to use as my data comparables because they're my competitor locations. So when the valuer comes back at the end, if you're interested in commercial values and goes, oh, I found one in OL2, I just go, no, it's a completely different comparable location, a completely different rental yield and value. Uh, here's all my rental comparables. Here's some sales values for that area versus this area. You can't use that as a comparable. Otherwise, you're going to give us the wrong yield. Yeah. So, and I capture all of that data all the time. So this is the kind of data that we hold within within our within our systems, if you like. Uh, and that's how we do sort of zoning. So it's a comparable zone map around Greater Manchester. So just going back. So bearing in mind that's then zone three. Um, so we go back to the zones. This is zone three, commuter belt within a five minute drive of the M60. It was literally bang on the M60. Um, third most premium zone for HMOs. Expected rates between 650 and 750 and yield values between 10 and 11 and half percent. We achieved 675 for five of the rooms and 695 for one of the rooms. And the reason that is there's a bit more premium to the left hand side of that cross because there's a Metrolink around the around the other zone threes, whereas on the our zone that we're we're completely reliant on the motorway and the buses. So it's a le slightly less premium area, but it's still bang on commuter belt. So we're on the lower end of the market. So we're at 675 to 695. We're not going to get to the 750s because you can go and live right by a Metrolink for 750. But if you want to save 50 quid a month, you can come and live with us. We filled it at that level uh, so we can absolutely evidence all of those things to, our, to, to any value or surveyor. Um, <clears throat> just a few tips from experience. We'll talk about that before we actually go on to do some like live stuff within, um, within um, Property Filter so we can actually apply a strategy. Uh, the first one is just network with others that do your strategy um, because there'll be people that you don't network with that do your strategy but I would always network with people that do my strategy simply because it helps me get better I see what they're doing I see what works it helps me get comparable data it helps me get examples they, they sometimes if you get good relationships they refer builders um, that type of stuff you know and it really 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 helps um, keep a record of sold comparables I don't think comparables is a word but comparable data um, so sold comparable data, keep a record. If you see something in your strategy, that's just sold, keep that record or it's for sale. Keep a record of the address. And the reason for that is when it comes to valuation time, if you're coming to get a valuation using a yield comparable, they're going to go off sales comparables. Um, uh, I'm already logged in game, but thanks for that. 
<laughs> um, uh, make an offer that's right for you. Don't go above your budget. You know, one offer is better than no offer. Yeah, make an offer that's right for you. When you find the property, you've done your space lights and rights, you've done your location, you've done your examples, you've done your yields, you've done all of that type of stuff, or you've done your bricks and mortar comparables. Make the offer that's right for you. And it's simple. It's the purchase price plus the bill cost plus the finance cost plus the purchase costs equals X and what profit you need equals Y. And then that equals Z, which is the end price. You know, so you have to work it backwards. It's no more complex than that. Don't overthink it. Don't try and make numbers work and be precise, especially when you're using property filter. Be precise uh, when you're going on property filter. Otherwise, you're just replacing right move and Zoopla with property filter and you're not applying a strategy. So you apply your strategy and be precise. Uh, don't be afraid. like people say to me sometimes, oh, but what happens if somebody lists this as this? And I'm like, well, I'd rather miss out on 5% of wrongly listed stuff and really drill down and niche down into the 95% of stuff that I can find easily within my zone that I can then go and view to cut down on my desk based time. So I can be out and about meeting people and meeting vendors. I'd rather miss out on those 5%. Yes, that might mean, mean somebody finds a wonderful deal, but I find two deals a month. So with the greatest of respect, that 5% is not worth adding another eight hours of my time just because there's a fear of missing out on 5%. So go really, really precise. Use the filters. Um, th this next one, like, I, th I know this is one of Guillaume's biggest frustrators, frustrations as well with um, with the user's property filter. And I don't mean that as a generalization. I mean that as a, you might this might resonate with you though. View stuff. Right? How many viewings have you done last week? If you're on holiday, then fine. But how many viewings have you done? You know, if you haven't done any viewings, it doesn't matter how much time you spend on property filter. You're not going to do any deals. View stuff, then do some calculations and stuff. Make mistakes. I'm never going to be able to buy that property or I've offered too high. I'm going to have to pull it. Make mistakes. Get better. And then ask. But you only do that by asking questions. Okay, asking questions of yourself, reviewing what you're doing. Just view stuff, right? Once you've got your strategy, view stuff and you will get better and better and better and better and better. And if you're networking with others that do your strategy, they can give you tips and tricks. And we give tips and tricks all the time. And the final one is sort of like encompassing all of the above, which is property filter is going to save you time, but only if you let it. So it's only going to save you time if you apply a strategy and if you view stuff. It's only going to save you time if you can do a deal and at the end you've got a record of sold comparable it's only going to save you time if you know how much you've got to spend it's only going to save you time if you if you know what strategy you're doing you know all of those things are relevant to what we're doing right so i appreciate i might be a bit direct in the way i talk. I get told i'm too direct by the way you know i might have been very direct here so apologies if i've been a bit direct but if any of these things are resonate with you it's because i really want people to actually do good deals and do great deals right so um property filter will save you time it's an absolutely wonderful tool okay so um I better tell you what we do, actually. So before I do the property filter part, what I'll do is, so what do property portfolio building and invest actually do? Invest multi actually do? Well, we source, build, and manage. So if you want to do a development project and you don't want the hassle of doing it, we have a lot of international investors, and there's a couple on this call. They'll be already texting me going, you're being direct again. Um, so apologies for that. Um, but uh, it is sold out at the moment. It's sold out until October 23. Uh, and what we do is you basically... We are your eyes and ears on the ground in Greater Manchester. So if you want a HMO in Greater Manchester or you want a block of flats or commercial conversion in Greater Manchester, we do that on behalf of investors. It's our profit play. and we did profit before. So our fees, et cetera, are related to our profit play. But the end product is you will get a end product in situ that's done by myself and my colleague, Tim. Um, and it will beat any deal that you can do if you've never done one before, certainly. Um um we offer coaching for landlord developers so if you're really wanting to get ahead and you don't want any of the nonsense and you wanted to do development work and you wanted to do actual purchase we don't teach rent to rent we don't you know we purchase lease option is a tool that we do teach but it's a tool to purchase the property it's not a strategy or a three-day weekend or anything like that um um so if you wanted to do that we only take six people on in, in a year and we've got two already so uh, october would be the time if you wanted to do some coaching with us uh, and the the only thing you, you we would say is it's it's for people who are actually going to go and take action. So if you're going to go and actually do deals, we'd be ha we'd be happy to happy to happy to work with you. You know, um, and if it's a, if it's a I I just I'm just I, I've got the money. I know this is what I want to do, and I just I'm just nervous about stuff. 
that's perfect because we're we, that's the bit that we can say no absolute you you you've you got to take risks and this is a more measured risk that you can take so it's only coaching it's basically all through all those things that we talked about the strategy your sort of like space lights and rights we talked to you about building we've got all the systems for building how to purchase how to find a builder how to do a tender tender documentation all of that type of good stuff how to appraise a project all that type of good stuff is all is all, is all taught and um, we're not a hit, hit richie clapson and simon zucci or anything like that is a year's program we don't do like we don't we don't do um it's to help you find that property deal right so we're not, not going to do a three-day weekend leave you on your own um ready-made uh co-living hmo so if you don't want to take on bridging you don't like risk you just want to buy a hmo at the end you can do so we will we will take the risk it's our money we will put on the line it's our risk your reward so you will get a hmo yield in between usually be outside about just on the commuter belt that we showed you 11 to 12 percent yield um the way that that works is we find it we buy it we do the we do the funding for the bridging and all that kind of stuff and you just entered into a contract of exchange at the start of the program so then as long as we hit your criteria you buy it at the end so if you want a ready-made off the shelf HMO and you don't want to take on the risk and you're happy with the 12% to 11% yield, then we could do that for you. JVs for profit splits. We do this all the time. We've got some mega, we've got some mega JVs on at the moment. We've got a 23 bed HMO. Uh, we've got a mill conversion, high end mill conversion. Um, so if you just wanted to make profit and you don't, you want to work with um, uh, experienced developers, then you, you know, we have JVs available on those, on those as well um and we do discovery day tours so we've just done one um so it's just gone the next one's october um and on those discovery days we walk you around at least three projects at various stages we talk to you about all the things we talked about there space lights and rights why we selected the location how we selected the builder uh how we sorted out the finance and the finance is a home uh, area in itself um uh, uh and we do all those types of things so if you want to do any of those things with us, uh, if any of the top four ones are of interest, book a call with us. You can just use that QR code or whatever. I'm sure Game will send it out. If you want to do the project discovery day, just send me an email. We'll get you booked on and I'll send you the email when it's, we haven't even decided on the day. I know it's October, but we haven't decided on the day yet. So it will be in October and we'll send you the dates. And if you can then come, great. If you can't, don't worry about it. Right. Property filter. I've got, I've got time here, Graham, right? Game, right? Yeah, cool. Yeah, just uh, just jumping a little bit. Uh, thank you for the the content. I think it was really useful and uh, interesting. So I really liked your open line. You know, uh, what the heck am I doing? You know, and I think there is a point in every investor developer journey where there's a realization that uh, what 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 the heck am I doing? You know, I'm wasting my time around here, and it's this lack of clarity that makes us you know just waste our time. You know, chasing our tail and not really going anywhere. So it's a big realization everybody has or owns to have. You know, it's like a the big filter. You know, you either you had it or you're gonna have it. You know, and uh, I think it's a very interesting illustration you use. The wealth hierarchy. I think it's fundamental. We had Dan Hill talking about this. is one of the first uh, sessions uh, of this uh, Define the Corner series. So go and have a look at that. You know, wealth hierarchy. It just gives you so much clarity. In what is it that you are looking for from property? And I, I really love the framework you and team has on uh, your HMO space, space, light, uh, right, location, you know, location, location, uh, the game of two halves, the build better. Finance, right? Yeah. yeah all, all of that, you know, like it's a really good and sim simple framework. I don't want to repeat that you are uh, simple minded. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, yeah, how did you say? I'm a, I'm a man of simple. Uh, I'm a simple. I'm a simple. I'm a simple man. I like simple things. Simple so we put it. We, we put. We, we put. We, we put everything into a simple process. And some, we, sometimes we make it too simple. And people ask com complex questions, and that frustrates me. Tim's better at the complex questions. I get frustrated with complex questions. I just like no, no, it's this. And sometimes yeah, it comes across yeah. a bit direct. Di direct. You know, it's like no, no, it's this. You know, and yeah, I just yeah, answer the question. Yeah. You know, so people like to get to their journeys at different ways. So. You know, we have some clients when we give them the appraisal, they'll go through each cell on the Excel sheet and they'll start asking, what's C1 and C2 and C3? Why is that? And I'm like, it just is. Tim Tim will take the time to explain it to them. And stuff. Mm -hmm. I'll just, no, that's it. It just is. Uh, but then in the sales process, it's the other way around. So when we're doing deals and we're trying to get the discounts for clients and so on and so forth, we reckon we've made around £900,000 for clients in equity this year. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's a different story because that's where that's where I come into my forte, right? So it's really, mm -hmm. it's, it's a completely different story. So I still it's hold really... that. I still hold, I still hold. I don't know anybody else who's ever got a discount from a vendor by the end of a conversation just because they liked you and you knocked me 20 grand off a deal. <laughs> well, well done for that. All right. There you go. Yeah, How about that? 
And uh, yeah, really cool on your price yield uh, zoning as well. Um, mm -hmm. And then the top. Let's go back to it. Really... Yeah, I really like, really like I... it. Yeah. So uh, can you go back to it. Yeah, yeah, go back to it if you want. The yeah, zoning yeah. system. Yeah, I'm yeah, just trying soul. to understand why I can't. The records of the soul. This one? Offer, offer on everything. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, the tips, yeah. Offer on everything. That's, that's massive. That is massive. Keep a record of soul comparables. So we've, yeah. got, we've got a record of at least 25 soul comparables that we use for our valuers. HMOs in Greater Manchester. No, we're not going to give it to you. Um, <laughs> you know, it just is what it is. We keep the yeah. records. Um, but, um, you know, it really is, it's really important because the value is going to come back and they're just going to look at, if you, you try and find a HMO that's sold on the land registry, try and find one. Yeah, yeah. Really you can't even search, you can't search for it, right? It doesn't tell, it doesn't tell you what it is because the HMO class four, C4 is only a planning class. It's not a, it's not a land registry class. Mm -hmm. So you can't find it. So what they're going to do is they're going to go into auction sites and they're going to find HMOs that are available for auction and then or have sold at auction recently. And the problem with that is auction sales are discounted and there's a problem with the property. So unless you keep a record of those things, uh, with the ones that sell, the good tenanted co-living you know, co professional ones, they're just going to give you auction ones values locally and you're going to get down value. So you've just got to keep a record. Yeah. Yeah, no, that is uh, all of that is really cool stuff. So I hope you guys have taken some picture. Focus, be precise. Don't waste your time with FOMO, the what ifs that to waste. You know, just circle your time, and view yeah. stuff. Yeah, absolutely, view stuff. So the, the, I think it, this illustrates really well what you guys are doing. You know, the ones are doing the best at prop filter. You know, with prop filter, is they they are clear about what they are looking for and where uh, they use prop filter to hammer down the the hell out of a exactly what they're looking for you know and every motivated seller in their area and mm -hmm. you guys are illustrate that as well you know highly strategic only view the best stuff offer on every viewing and then never miss a follow-up on the other side and at, at the yeah. end it's simple like that but yeah and, and look and look if you take if you, like i can't tell you how much value this one slide adds if you've not taken a picture of this slide mm -hmm. then then and you and you want to do hmos then then i don't i, don't, I generally don't know what i don't know what, i don't know what you're doing and, yeah. I, and i mean that with and i mean that with love because what did, did you build this one for the, Manchester uh, field? What did you build this for Manchester? Ex what? So oh, no. hours and hours and hours on spare room, hours and hours and hours on tracking data, tracking sale comparables, uh, hours of you know our own agency, uh, talking with you know Matt Barrett, um, yeah. talking with sell uh, investing HMOs, um, investor, other specialist sites that sell tenanted stuff. Get asking them where they're selling stuff, getting the addresses, tracking that, you know. So, you know that that's yeah. the length that we go to to get this data because it's really really important. Um, yeah, so, so yeah. one for Birmingham actually, see. and uh, we use the the lenders a lot, you know, like the mortgage brokers. They they know they've done a lot. They can help you for these things. Cool. Thanks so much, Phil. Do you want to show us a little bit uh, how it's done? Yeah, let's do it. Right. Did we get a location? I see that there's lots of messages. Did you want to pick uh, one, Guillaume? Uh, I think someone at the Lancashire, if I remember well. Lancashire? Lancashire. I think the first one was Lancaster. Yeah. Lancaster. Oh, very Lan good. Lancaster. Oh, we've got uh, Mansfield as well. Leeds, Shrewsbury. Okay. Oh, that's a nice piece uh, of stuff. Which, which one should we do? Pick uh, one, which please. Which one you want? Um, should we just do... Well, well which is... Bit, uh, Leeds is quite sizable, right? So we'll do Leeds. So, yeah. yeah, cool, yeah. So Leeds... Postcode. Well, I just go uh, LS, LS, yeah. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So uh, what I know about Leeds, because I used to live in Leeds, um, is that there's a central area, and then they've got this thing called the loop. The loop. Yeah. If you ever get stuck on the loop, you're never getting out of it. Um, so it's, got, it's a ring road that runs around from the, from the motorway here. Um, so you've got an M62 motorway that runs along here. So your main computer belt is going to be to the south. And then you've got some posher areas up here in Horsford um, and sort of out towards Ilkley Harrogate Way. So the north is posh, south is commuter belt, um, and that's kind of areas. So I can't really see any of those things. So I'm going to go for, let's go for LS1, and then we'll have a look where it is on the map. Nice little piece of uh, okay, so Leeds generator. So if I'm looking to my left, it's because I've got dual screen. So oh, okay, so we're going to add a Leeds generator. I'm going to go LS1. We do offer strategy sessions as well. If you are looking for a strategy session, 
Uh, obviously, we do um, it's a chargeable thing, but if you are looking for strategy sessions in your business, please we do that. So LS1, so Lead Central, is it Article 4, Guy? Yeah, you can, you know? you, yeah, there, there is some Article 4. You can use the filters to include or exclude it, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'm just, I just include it for now, uh, and then we can obviously, so like I said, more or less, this is your sort of like, I used to live in Pudsey, this is your commuter belt, and then property prices uh, centrally here are going to be okay. And then as you head out towards this area here, it's going to get more expensive. This is the nice part of town. Uh, this part this part of like Bradford as well. It's Shipley area. It's a nice part of town. Um, so all of these zones here are all going to be pretty good, I think. Uh, so are we using your template? Should we use it? Yeah, yeah. I think it's used. Okay, so, it's in, uh, so we're going for HMO PD conversions. Oh, you've lowered it to 90 meters. Why have you done that? Someone's asked for it for a All right, okay. last week. Yeah. Mm. Okay, I'm going to do my own filter. Then. Okay, <laughs> so it's going to be HMO potential for living leads. Oh God, I've got caps lock on. Yeah, you're telling me. Yeah. yeah. HMO. Safe. Safe. Previous step strategy, do my own strategy, right? No template, there we go. Yeah, yeah, if you want, yeah. Uh, sorry, uh, you've got okay. a small screen. So, yeah, if you go back, uh, Phil, you want to you fill, you fill your own thing? No, no, we'll just do this. Okay. Where am I? Yeah, it should, should be uh, at the bottom, yeah. Yeah. Just I've got a few, sorry, 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 yeah. Mm. Okay, so I'm just going to edit this. Yeah, maybe too All right, time. so uh, what I'm going to look for um it's for sale normally you can look at for sale to rent that's a slightly different strategy but i'm just going to look for, for, for houses um now i'm not going to use bedrooms um because i don't really care on the number of bedrooms at, at this point um because i'm going to use the 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 um meters square right mm -hmm. square meters um so i'm going to use the advanced filters i'm going to specific filters uh, and all i'm going to do 100 square meters Per meters, and I'm going to go for max 150 just for argument's sake. And I'm going to go, ma in fact, I'm going to go max 120. And the reason for that is what I can now do in this space is I know that between 100 and 120 meters is five bed because for six beds, I'm going to have to add additional communal space. So I need at least 126 meters. Okay. So I'm going to look for 100 to 120 meters for a five bed property. So you know, I said like be detailed. So I'm going to have property filter set up for a five bed one. And then I'm going to set up a second one. In fact, I'll do one, two, five, which would be one, two, five to one, three, five, which would be a six bed, six bed one. Right. So that is how I would work this. Um, so uh, we're not going to include unknown surface areas. That's a separate, that's a separate search again. Uh, and then I'm just going to put in some pricing. So I'm going to treat this a little bit like Greater Manchester. So for a five bed one, I'm probably looking at around 90 to 95,000 pounds total spend on development. Um, so I kind of want to get a price. Uh, so I'm going to look for anything maximum price up to around 190,000. Now, when you're choosing your upper level price, um, I always go 15 to 20%, depending on the market above what I'm going to be able to spend. So this isn't where I would put it. I'd normally put it to 10, but I want to be more specific on here because I'm going to just test the water. So, and the so reason for that the, is, you want to remove the flats, um, what? Do you yeah. remove the flats and stuff? Yeah. Mm. Uh, do I? No, I don't. Okay. One of my best, one of my best HMOs is two flats that I amalgamated into one HMO. Interesting. Um, so uh, and then I'm going to hit save. Okay. So 24. Check leads. Uh, so what I'm looking for now is, you see these things here? I'm just going to double check the, the, the size and square meterage here. So I've got a two bird farm freehold, 117 square meters internally for 165K. So for, uh, depending on the footprint, depending on the so, uh, if there is one. So it's look at this, look how many adverts there is. It's going to have been on for sale. It's going to have dropped out. It's gone up to 390. Yeah, it could be with an auction here now. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's not a great example then. Yeah. Um, 
I'm just going to go unavailable. Um, so four bed terrace house, 105 square meters. Show details. Is there a floor plan? There's no floor plan. That's not ideal. You can see some conversion upstairs. So my concern for this is and the reason I wouldn't be going to view this, is this isn't one and a half meters. Mm -hmm. So that you, I can tell that already. It's not going to hit one and a half meters. So this conversion upstairs isn't going to be right. So I'm not going to be able to use that additional room. So that space is dead. And therefore it's going to bring it underneath my 105 square, 100 meters minimum. Um, uh, there we go. Semi-detached freehold uh, end as well. So it might have a couple of sides on it. It has a floor plan. Uh, ground floor, so uh, ground floor, 44 square meters. First floor, sec 43 square meters. Second And the second floor, 44 square meters. Looks good. Oh, no. Hold on. What's this? Why has it got? Yeah, you got the ground again. Yeah. 108. Yeah, yeah, okay. So there's going to be some conversion work to do here. Uh, so this doesn't match the EPC. Mm. So the EPC is the number you see on property filter, which is this number here. And then the floor plan. Now, this could be a really good deal, right? Mm. Because somebody's measured this. And if the EPC is right and this is wrong, then any HMO developer that doesn't know what they're doing is not going to go and view this property because for this standard because it's got the wrong numbers on. I would go and see this on the off chance that these numbers are wrong and the EPC number is right. Okay? So, uh, so space-wise, let's pretend it is 50-50 then. I'm then looking for lights, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 windows, so like at least three sides to the property, ideally spaced out. There's a couple of storage and bath space, like S and B here. Like I can just put a line in there, you know, and, you know, I could just cut all these things off and, you know, re, 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 re jig some stuff. And I'm sure I can squeeze out the extra meters that I need out of this. This is probably looking like a, a viewing as a, as a bare minimum. Um, and, that, uh, uh, and you can just see it looks like it. So if I then go to the map, look at my location. I'm on, So I'm on the main road and there's a train here. So if I look here, it's going to tell me there's a train station close, or they might not do. So 2.3 miles for cross gates, but the train line's there. Does it have a tram system? It doesn't, does it? Okay, not this, sure. might be, this might be wrong. Yeah. And that's the thing about Manchester is if you don't know Manchester well, it tells you the train's 2.1 miles away and the metro link's about 20 meters away. So um, you need to load the local area. So I don't know whether there's a train station there or not, but it looks like there's a main train line that runs through here. Uh, and it, how far to the town centre? A mile or less? It looks a main bus route as well. It looks like a pretty solid location for a HMO, um, depending on whether or not it's Article 4 or not. It probably will be. It's in Article 4. I don't know what the change of class is like for, 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 for Leeds, but certain areas of Manchester would test it, certain areas you wouldn't. Um, let's see if I can see one that's a little bit bigger. Um, 155. A little bit bigger. 122 square metres. Uh, four bed house here. End terrace as well. 118 square metres. 145,000. Might have used the cellar for some of the meterage. Uh, ground floor, 45, first floor, 37, second floor, 37. So no, they haven't used the basement in that in that value in the area for the EPC, but they have on here. So the EPC value is here, is correct. Whether or not you can get light into the cellar, maybe living space, you know, if you're going really upmarket cinema room or whatever, you know, the fancy people do, we don't do that. Uh, but you've definitely got space for bike storage, which is one of the critical things when you're doing HMOs. Um, but this looks like a HMO. If you want to know what a HMO looks like, that's it. it look, that looks like a HMO. And I can easily go, right, I'm going to walk in there, ground floor, I've got a lounge on my right, a kitchen on my left. I've got one, two, three, four, at least five bedrooms. And that's before I start rejigging. So five rooms, if I can achieve a, a, a rental yield at, um, you know, 625 to 650 a month at 12%, I'm probably looking at an end value of around 330,000 pounds. I can buy that for 145. I can spend 95. I'll let you do the maths for a minute. Yeah. So 95 spend on, on, on the works, 145 in the purchase. Then you've got fees and costs and stuff, about 20% extra. So you're probably coming in at around 260 all in, 270 all in, so, uh, something like that. Uh, maybe 280 if, you, if there's some utility stuff mm. or, or whatever. 
uh, and you're going to get 330. So you're going to make 50K a worth of equity based on that on a 12% yield. If you get 11.5 at 11% yield, even better. Even better. Yeah, that's not even looking at the seller as opportunities to do stuff in there. Yeah. yeah, we tend not to do too much in sellers. It, it, I mean, that look like it, it, whoever's in Leeds. <laughs> I don't know what your article four zones its own is like, but uh, or whether or not they're just completely close to it because it looks like it's in. But if you've mm. got social housing or you've got a social housing need or anything like that, that's a perfect. That is a perfect HMO right there. Um, I don't know whether or not they do density or any of those types of things. So we'd have to have a conversation with the pl uh, a pl we've got our own planning business as well. So uh, we'd have to have a conversation with the planning consultant to check out whether or not it is there or there or not. Uh, but if it's not, that that would be your typical de development right there. If I just go back and see if there's anything, if I just add in the um, in, into the leads generator, um, the non-article four area, just so we see if we can see any that see if it's got any that are non-article four. Uh, is it advanced filter? Yeah, that's right. In there, yeah. And then outside. Uh, yeah. Outside, yeah. Okay, so. So it could be we need to be a bit wider because the central yeah. pits are all No, no, wide. that's fine. This, 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 this six. Um, so is this auction one? There you go. Okay. So 103 square meters. Mm. It's more. Probably going to, yeah, I mean, it looks like, a, I mean, one, two, I mean, very quickly, one, two, I don't know whether or not you're going to get one in there, whether you'd have to remove this board or whatever, but you're going to repartition everything as well. So don't be afraid of moving a wall internally. The externally, you've got to worry about, but the, I like the central corridor thing because you can split the property into two. So as long as the stairs are all on one side and as long as these can get en suites in, then you've probably got, you know, you coming in the front door there, there's a corridor there. Uh, so you probably have your kitchen diner there, bedroom there two three four five so you might look at a five bed property there um that might work that might work Hundred and ten thousand as well you can do pretty much anything you want genuinely if you want to extend or you want to go into the loft or any other types of things if you get a purchase price at that level then you you're you're on you're on a winner do you want to show us um, uh, or you or you do or you deal with your sourcing pipeline because i know this is where you convert all your good leads into deals mm-hmm I know you like it. you like looking for a deal, yeah. <laughs> That's a deal. I just I just looked at it. I was like, hang on a minute. This looks like a deal. One twenty six, one twenty seven. Yeah, I'd say I'd say if you're in Leeds area, and this is, let me give you the address. LS twenty seven. Twenty six Elon Road. It's a bit far. It's maybe a bit far out. Yeah. Depends on the trend. Depends on the train. But it's on commuter belt area because you got the M sixty two there. Um. No restricted covenants. Hundred and sixty. Yeah, it looks good. Yep. But it depends on the amenities. Obviously, there's a whole other things, a bunch of questions you need to ask yourself in terms of amenities. But it looks like the kind of standard you want to see, you know, re reasonably, yeah, basic and so on and so forth. Might have to worry about this if it's not two meters. If that central beam isn't one point nine meters. Forget it. You can't use that space. Yep. So you need to, that's the thing you'd need to measure above everything else. Uh, so there's a little tip as well. It has to be at least 1.9 normally. And you have to look at the council standards as well because some of them are above 2 metres, some are 2.1. But post-conversion, if that's if that beam's 1.9, you're okay. If it's not, unfortunately, you can't use that space unless you... And someone's asking, what discount would you expect on this? And I think it's an interesting question because... Uh, yeah, the question. Is, so the answer so is... It's already, okay. So it's obviously a motivated seller. They started at 175. They dropped to 170. It's been on, on sale since when? 13th to 2nd, 23. So... Phew. Uh, you know, six months it's plus, months. and it's not it's sold. Mm -hmm. You know, depends on the motivation of the seller. You can ask questions of the agent. I mean, you might get that for one four five. I'd be I'd be aiming for around one four five for that. Uh, it, that it, property. You, you are quite clear on the profit margins you want. So as long as you achieve mm. that, you know, you're happy. Yeah. Yeah. So this would be if I was zoning this space, this would be like a zone four, a uh, zone three slash four. Mm -hmm. So you're looking at a slightly lower, slightly maybe higher yield at the end, a slightly lower. Um, uh, rental because yeah. you're outside. You retract. You, you're not going to compete with the town centre because you're going to compete with people who would, might work from home two days a week or three days a week. 
you might compete with people who don't want to pay the premiums to town centre. You might want to pay, you know, people who've got cars or whatever. So you're going to be slightly lower on the on the rent. So if it's if it's eight hundred in the town centre, you might be at five fifty to six hundred in, in in that zone. So based on those rents, or maybe six fifty. If you're based on those rents, then you know you want to be like one four five. Uh, if it's up to six fifty rent, we're looking at one four five to one six five purchase max. That's the and the cheaper we get it, the better. Uh, for a five bed and then we're looking at then the bill costs and so on and so forth on top of that so Jim, can we have a quick look at the sourcing pipeline and uh after uh try to wrap up uh my mine yeah uh sorry yeah no on this one is okay yeah mm. okay just, just if you want to explain how you work with this yeah so sure so um so obviously you got your leads generator um so how we work is on a leads generator when we dive into this um so uh, very simple. I'd just choose the property on the lead generator. Uh, and I'd say, right, so let's go to that one that looked like it'd be a good deal. Um, I think it was this one, right? So I just go save to pipeline. Um, that then brings me into the due dil due, do due diligence. That's so hard to say. Do due diligence. So and do due, di do due diligence. Uh, that then brings this property into this pipeline. So it'd be on here somewhere, um, yeah. maybe towards the bottom or something um i don't know where it is but it bring it into this space uh once i've then done that so my first glance on leads generator all i'm looking for is that first space space lights and rights because i want to get through the leads really really quickly so space light and rights is it got the right space does it have the right light is it within an actual ball zone yes or no uh is it an existing hmo planning yes or no and if the answer to any of those questions matches what i look for straight into the due, due, due diligence. And at that point, I'm going to take a harder look because at this point, I'm going to start committing my most valuable product, which is my time. So before I go to viewing and I spend half an hour there, half an hour back, uh, 15 to 20 minutes waiting for the agent and then 15 minutes uh, doing the viewing because they were late, um, um, then I'm going to actually do my due diligence at this point, which is I'm going to look at the location. I'm going to dive into spare room. So like that was LS27. So I just dive into there straight away. Um, uh, I'm pretty punchy. So there's 10 results. I always go price highest. Um, so bills included spacious double bedroom, non-suite 625 uh, within this, within a, within a boundary. So like I said, 600 to 650 is probably about that right zone. That's probably what I'm going to compete with on finish. So I've got an exact... This is available. Um, I'm probably going to be a bit cheeky and message this guy to say, "Is this room still available? How many how many rooms are in the house? Are there any of the, are there any of the tenants?" And and then I'll know whether or not there is it's been filled or whatever. So that's a four bed as well. So um, you know it's it's there's other there's other there's other rooms in there. Uh, so I'm going to go right. Yep, yeah, let's go. I'm going to go to the viewing. Uh, so then I'm going to organize my viewing and on the due diligence, I'm going to click on the property. I'm going to get my uh, I'm going to add an action. I'm going to click on organized viewing. This is how I do it. It might not be the best way to do it. Uh, and I'm just going to put um, the viewing date in there, check date in there. And at one time in the future, Guillaume's going to link this to Outlook and it's going to sort my life out. Um, uh, soon, soon. <laughs> soon, soon. That's, a, that's what you keep saying, right? Haven't you, mate? <laughs> uh, so, uh, and then when I've done, so when I've gone, you know, I go and do my viewing, uh, just get changes. Uh, and then I'm, you know, I've done my viewing before I go to most of you. I'm going to make an offer. I know I'm making an offer mo most times. Right. So I, I already know. So for me, it's just coming back. As you can see, there's now less, there's only three in here. So if you're on mine, there's, there's currently four in, in the, in the organized viewing space. And all I'm going, all I'm going to do there is I check every day. Have I made the offer? Have I followed up the offer? You know, and all that type of stuff. So it remains in there until the offer is either accepted or rejected. And at which point if it's, if, it, um, sorry. I then make the offer and then it remains in here until it's either accepted or rejected. And if it's accepted, it goes into offer accepted. And if it's follow, if it's rejected, it goes into follow up. Now, the thing that property filter does that um, others didn't do, which is why I love it more than anything else is the add off market property. So I employ somebody, uh, it's actually Mrs. Phil. Um, so uh, who, uh, does the first sift? I don't do the first sift anymore because you know we're very precise, so we can. I nearly said we can teach anybody. Then that sounds like forget it was Mrs. Phil, right? Let's just yeah, forget yeah. that. Okay, <laughs> just a saucer. Um, so I can add off market property. So what I would do is I'd add off market property. And the good thing about this is on the postcode, if I get the address right, often it pulls through the EPC data. 
So I actually get the sizing still for the property, even if it's there, even if it's, you know, even if it's not been found by a property filter, which is really, really good. I always do double check these though. I go to the EPC register on the government website just to double check what the most recent EPC is, because sometimes it's a bit, it's a bit um, um, hit or miss. That's not property fault, that's more the government's fault. Uh, and I add the property as an off-market property. I put in like one photo, but I also put then the link to where it is. So, uh, so if it's on an auction site, or it's on a commercial property site or whatever it is, I'll go back and I'll I'll, I'll be able to click that link and, 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 then, and then go straight to that property. Uh, and I'll follow the same process. So that will go straight into my, to my um, do, 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 do. You got this. Check, check my property space. Uh, and then I will add... Um, the next thing which is just organized viewing i'm only gonna i'm only gonna add them in here if i know i'm gonna organize mm -hmm. a viewing because otherwise i'm wasting my time so so i have somebody that goes through all the commercial sites i have somebody that goes to all the commercial auction sites uh it's getting better property filters is getting better at identifying commercial property uh, but it doesn't capture everything so i i have a secondary catch-all that goes through a lot of the commercial uh agent sites and auction sites etc um especially for the bigger properties uh, and then we add them on there and that's how we manage it. I mean, it's, it really is that simple. And then it's nice to see the offer accepted, keep going up and up and up and up. You know, we leave them in there. It's nice to see. Um, they stay in there. It also gives us a reminder, actually. So uh, when somebody says to me, because you know, sometimes our, our, our clients say, oh, I can't remember what, how, how many days, how, how long how long has it been? They simply we bought this property. I can log in there and it tells me. Because uh, it'll go subject to sold subject to contracts on the property filter, yeah. and it tells me the number of days that I've actually you've actually had this property under your under your banner, or if it's sold, it'll tell you the number of days, which is great because it's just another it's another it's another backwards reflection. Well, um, thanks so much, Phil. I'm mindful of time. Uh, yeah. Uh, th yeah. Thank you so much. The it, the presentation has been really really valuable. It's been great to have team as well to uh, make my life a lot easier. Actually, accurately answering questions for once. <laughs> rather than me trying to uh, wing it, you know, so that's been great. And then your demo of how you actually use Property Filter, I mean, I think that's super, super valuable. That's Was really there any valuable. other questions before we before we ring off? Was there any others? Any last minute ones? I think your team has been on it, uh, taking care of people really well, so which is why I, I kind of uh, let you do more of the content part uh, because, yeah, the questions were being answered, which is maybe something we want to... Uh, try and do more because that means we get more of the guests you know so Phil have you got a final uh, sort of uh, food for thoughts or uh, last words as it were no good, 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 good luck and please, please in your property journeys do add me on LinkedIn and Facebook if you use anything more advanced than that then you're clearly younger than me um, they're the two that I use I do have other accounts Twitter Instagram I've never been on them it's just my social media manager who does those things so uh, LinkedIn and Facebook um, there's only one Phil Bygrave, which is a, a, a nice little, uh, a nice little uh, thing to run off, run off the tongue. So please do, please do add me to, to LinkedIn and Facebook. Uh, please follow our journey, and I'd love to see yours as well. Uh, but the, the thing for me is just going back to that: use Property Filter for your strategy, and get you know, but understand where you are in your strategy. You know, like why are you doing property? Uh, because most people fall into property with a single buy to let. They move straight into the assets column, and then they get cash stuck. You know, and then they're like, oh, I, didn't, I don't know what to do next. It's only paying me a couple of hundred quid a month. You know, it's going to take me forever to get to that, like, cash out basis or paying my bills or whatever. There's more advanced strategies than just a single buy to let, although it is the safest, you know, the more the, the safest strategy. And just understand where you are in the chain, you know, because if you can get some unencumbered ones through doing some flips, then it only takes a few unencumbered properties uh, to, get to, your, uh, to get to your cash out. And don't do the 10 grand, 5 grand thing. Be specific. Understand how much cash you need. How much cash you want to generate from noisy, noisier strategies like HMO or service accommodation, and then uh, start working through it. And it, it, you know, property takes time. Offer process a month to two months, buying process a month to three months. You know, you've got to just be patient with that. But the, when you need to be busy, uh, which is your getting to see the good properties, that's when you need to move quickly. Get your offers in, move quickly. Um, it will slow down naturally anyway. So you've always got time to review later. We did one on Friday. We re-reviewed a property that we had under offer on Property Filter. We found via Property Filter. We did a roof survey using a drone. Uh, the roof needs full replacement, not repair, uh, which is going to add another 15K to the budget. We sim Because that offer has been under offer for like uh, six weeks almost now, um, and it's getting to the point of sale, we went back to the vendor and said, look, last minute, 
we've just done the survey. Here's the survey. It needs a full reroute, not the repair work. Obviously, we couldn't see it. We agreed on site that we couldn't see it. We've come back to you. It's going to cost 15 grand. We need to reduce our offer by 15 grand. And they agreed it because they couldn't be bothered putting it back on the market. So there's little things like that that just get in quickly, do the offer, get the property into your control, and then work from there. That's another good tip. Deal. Thank you so much. Tim, as well, thank you for your help in the background. And uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us today on uh, today's Deal Final Corner. Visit uh, the Phil's uh, website, connect with him on uh, Facebook and LinkedIn. Visit the propertyfilter.co.uk uh, uh, website, uh, log into your Property Filter account, check out the deal blueprint, have an endless supply of deals, join the top 1% and become an high achiever deal finder. I hope you enjoyed today's deal finder corner like I did, and I look forward to speaking with you next week. Again, thank you again to everybody. Have a great day.